Hello and welcome to this quick video to go through how I set up the auto launch feature on the Arduplane builds that I do here. That's particularly the one that I'm currently doing, which is this He Wing T2 that I'm putting in things like a Pixhog Orange Cube here for and doing all the other bits and pieces. Now in the maiden flight, I'll show you how it actually went um, and it actually worked really well, but I don't get too hung up on how it all goes together because actually the defaults in Arduplane now are really good for the launch stuff. So I thought it'd be good if I just very quickly showed you how I put it together because it's a lot easier than it used to be. So here on the table, I've connected up to the Pilot Orange uh, running Arduplane inside the build that we've been doing. Let me show you how I get this set up. So what we're going to do, we're going to go into mandatory hardware. Now you can just select one of the regular flight modes that you'd have when you're flying around in Arduplane to be takeoff. Uh, you can just select it and have it as one of these, but I don't do it that way. The way that I do it is I go into config, go into user params, and I set up a separate switch for takeoff mode. This is RC7 is set for takeoff mode. That's on another switch on the radio. And that means that when I flick that switch, after I've armed the model, the plane is going to be ready to be thrown into the air. So the next thing then is to go into the full param list. The only things that I change these days, because it's a lot easier than it used to be, uh, if we search for TK off underscore THR, then it'll bring up all of the things. Now the default values are here and you can see I've changed a few of them. So let's go through them. So the way it works is the takeoff accelerator count is normally one, I set it to two. This is how many times the plane has to feel like it's been shaken or gone past a certain accelerometer value in order to start the uh, process. And I like to have it at two rather than one, just in case I accidentally bump it or something as I'm getting ready to throw it. The throttle delay is two, you can leave that as default. The other one I change is the throttle maximum. You can leave this as zero if you've already set up maximum throttles for autonomous flight and things other places. I always tend to set it in here. For this kind of plane, it has an awful lot of static thrust. I'm going to use it as kind of 80% for the maiden flight. We'll see how we get on, but I might have to bump it up a little bit to 85, maybe even 90%. Throttle max T I've left as default throttle min acceleration. So this is the minimum amount of acceleration that the plane has to detect, and it has to do it twice because we've set it up that way in order for it to be counted. Um, I think five's a nice value, but people like different values. I found that for me, five works really well, allows me to just kind of shake the plane twice and away it goes. Last one then is the throttle slew. Uh, this means that it's going to take two seconds. So it's going to get 50% of the throttle value every second. So if I wanted a five second spin up on the props, maybe it's a really big plane. I want to make sure that I've got a really good hold. Um, then I might have this at 20%. That's going to take five seconds. If I had it a hundred percent, it's going to take one second to spool up, which is pretty aggressive. Uh, I've got it at 50%, which is a couple of seconds. So the way it actually works at the field is that we will get everything ready, do our pre-checks, then we will arm the model, then I will flick channel seven, put it into launch mode. Then it's just a case of shaking it twice and then the motors will start to spool up. They'll take two seconds to reach full speed, at which point you can just throw it and Ardu Pilot will take off. The way it works is that it will climb to the predetermined height. It's 50 meters, but you can change that. And then after 50 meters, once it gets to 50 meters height, it'll cancel the launch mode and just go back to whatever you've got set, which for me is fly by wire A. So hopefully that helps explain how to set it up. It's actually so much easier these days. I would personally just set it up on a switch and then set up similar to how I have it here and it'll work great. Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Painless 360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.